For the first time, an influential government panel is flagging the use of AI and financial services as a system vulnerability. The Treasury Department's Financial Stability Oversight Council says that although AI offers potential benefits like lowering costs for consumers, it could also lead to cyber and other risks. Joining us right now is Chris Krebs. He's the president of Pinnacle One. He's also a former director of the Federal Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency. And Chris, thanks for coming in. Morning. Thanks. So the warning that Treasury issued said what exactly? So there are two parts to it. First is that AI, as just another form of technology, is introducing additional risks into the actual enterprise of a business. So we're already dealing with cloud risks, which is basic technology risk from, from computing, and now we're putting AI on top of it. And we, we don't really fully know the scope of uh, the potential risks that have been introduced into businesses. So these are cybersecurity risks associated with AI that, again, you know, you're seeing outbreaks of ransomware, of nation state threats, and we just have one more risk put on top. I'm trying to figure out what AI would do. <clears throat> you think of the deep fakes that are out there. Is that something where you That's can pretend? That's a second piece. Okay. So the, again, the first is more in the, in the computing side and the, uh, the productivity side where you may have a, a, a paralegal, for instance, draft up a letter to a, to a client in using a public uh, AI model. And so you're introducing oh, okay. confidential, potentially, information okay. into a public model. So you have a data leak risk okay, there. That, I get that. that could, could, you know, whether it's GDPR risks in, in Europe or uh, privacy risks here. Um, but the second piece that you're getting at is the deep fake or the synthetic media. Yeah, they, they know it's me when I call now because of my voice. They have other ways that they identify these things. Can sure. It, so you're seeing this exploding risk on, uh, on, the, on the privacy side and, and the, the sensitive information they have on us, the biometrics, uh, voice printing, to your point. But it can also be flipped around. So uh, last, la uh, earlier in the year, rather, there was an image that went viral on social media of the Pentagon or an image purporting to be the Pentagon on fire. Oh, right. And that moved right. the markets. Right. And that was briefly and it was quickly debunked, but there's no question that that moved the market and it could have been gamed in the meantime. And so you, you could see both uh, uh, panic, societal uh, chaos from, from synthetic media, but also those that are seeking to have some sort of financial gain or commit some, some sort of fraud using AI, AI risk. So, so what do we do about it? How do we protect ourselves? So this gets to, uh, on, the, on the technical risk to organizations, it's just one more aspect of enterprise risk management where you have to have a solid policy for AI use. Uh, you know, my, myself, I'm going through AI, uh, generative AI use training, and, and you know, it, it's in a one. Uh, and I think every company needs to think through what the potential risks are and put in good programs for discovery of how these things are, are being used uh, monitoring them on a regular basis and then control them. But to the to the, the deep fakes and the synthetic media, this is where the platforms come in. And, and the, I think the recent uh, executive order by the Biden administration is starting to move us down this path of what watermarking of legitimate content looks like. And so this is where users, where, where creators can watermark their content so it can't be abused. But this is also where platforms are going to need to start scanning whether it's, it's Meta, Facebook, uh, Twitter, whomever, need to start scanning for the use of generated content. And then uh, whether putting an interstitial, a, a marker or a banner on it, say, hey, this is fake, you may want to think about uh, before you amplify it. Um, what you said from the idea of a paralegal generating, using AI to generate a letter that they send to a customer, I hadn't thought about that because... Uh, I, I don't think there are a whole lot of companies that have really put the, the, the clamps down and said, you can't be using AI, period. And if they are, I don't know how well they're enforcing it through there, the ranks. There's, there's kind of a range of, or a spectrum of approaches and policies. The, the, the furthest out that I'm seeing, is mainly the big banks do, is a very restricted lockdown approach to generative AI in the workplace, where you only use private models, and that's going to be using the big common, you know, uh, the, the ones that you hear about every day between OpenAI and Microsoft and others. There's a middle ground where there is a restrictive policy uh, and you try to put in for some tools to monitor the outbound calls to uh, AI. And that's, that's what I'm seeing most companies do. But on the far side, there's also kind of a YOLO approach where it's like, hey, this is innovation. We have to use it or we're going right. to get left behind. And I think kind of on that side of the spectrum is where we're going to see a lot of the kind of unknown or downrange risks for data leaks and, and regulatory What are the legal ramifications for a company that's, that's taking this YOLO approach? Like, go ahead, play, let's figure it out. Well, I, you know, this gets to, it, it's, it's almost uh, starting to parallel ransomware, mm -hmm. where most companies now are not necessarily paying to unlock 
because they've gotten good restoration and recovery mechanisms in place. What most companies are paying for right now to the ransomware groups is uh, to prevent them from leaking data because they know that, that, again, in Europe, GDPR, here with the new emerging SEC regulations on uh, filing 8Ks if you have a material incident, it's the same sort of thing that you would see on an, on an AI data leak where companies would have to start making public disclosures that, oh, you know what, we combined sensitive customer information with a model that then got leaked or we didn't secure properly and started spilling out there to the public. And so now, now again, we have this data breach issue. Uh, but uh, it, it sounds like it is a land that is still well in need of regulation because what you're talking about is companies reacting really only to the regulatory requirements that are there. Banks are protecting themselves. Other companies are doing it. But for the most part, the action is where you see yeah. federal governments require so, you to do it. And, and there are a couple things there. The, the U.S. Congress is, I think, taking a very deliberative process to understanding what the risks of AI, the AI uh, might be. Uh, uh, Senate Majority Leader Schumer is having a series of AI insights forum sure. where he's kind of understanding what the national security risks, what are the risks to elections and democracy. So I think they'll, they'll take their time to get to some sort of legislative inter- intervention. And again, and I mentioned the executive order earlier, uh, the, the administration is aware of how AI could be used uh, for potentially uh, you know, bad outcomes, including credit decisions that that may have some sort of underlying bias. You don't really know how you got there, so explainability is important.